Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for tuning in to another video in our series on issues and local issues across Vermont related to the COVID-19 virus. Today, I have Christy Zola with me. She is a licensed clinical mental health counselor in Lindenville, Vermont, and we're partly bringing Christy in to really address some of the specific issues around mental health and mental health issues in, in the new social guidelines and the stress that comes with it, particularly how this may be amplified in rural areas uh, where maybe there's fewer people to, to quote bump into when you're out for a walk or other issues that affect folks in rural areas of Vermont with respect to COVID-19. Uh, Christy, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thanks David. To begin with, uh, this is a very stressful time for all Vermonters. Uh, people are experiencing a lot of stress, uh, economic stress, job stress, family stress, worry and anxiety maybe a little more elevated than we otherwise would be. What is just some general advice you could give Vermonters on how to get through the pandemic with the day-to-day -day stress? So we're all feeling anxiety right now and whatever we're feeling, if it's anger, if it's sadness, if it comes in waves, it's all very normal. For, so the first thing I wanna say is it's very valid for you to feel whatever it is you're feeling. We are not prepared to know what we should be feeling right now, okay? The second thing is that if you can sit with your anxiety and notice it in your body and notice what it feels like and kind of step back away from yourself for a minute, you can kind of feel a little bit better about things. We can't change what's happening. We're very little control over what's going on in our lives right now, right? We have financial stress. We have stress over family and friends, ourselves getting sick. Not a lot we can do. And we know as humans, sitting with that kind of not knowing what's going to happen is extremely difficult. So we can't really change a lot. But what we can do is just sit with a feeling, know we're going to feel it, and know it's going to pass. And so that's the big thing I want to say. I know on the news and media, they're saying, you know, take walks, have a schedule, that kind of stuff is great. But also just know that what you're feeling is absolutely okay. There's folks, sometimes some of the more rural population or some of the folks out there might say, tough deal with it. That's what you deal with in life. Adversity, things come at you, just toughen up, go through your day, get it done. Um, is that an okay response? I would say, you know, I've run into people like this too. I have clients who say the same thing. You can have that response as long as you're still being safe. <laughs> you know, think about other people too. So maybe you think it's okay to go out to the store without a mask or gloves and be near people, but let's think about how other people are feeling. Uh, so as long as we're, you know, taking into account that maybe other people are really scared when we go out, then we'll keep each other safe. Are there any specific mental health or grounding exercises that Vermonters can do at home during these challenging times? Something you could walk us through as a as an exercise someone could do? So breathing is important, right? Because if we carry the stress in our body for a long period of time, we're gonna end up with some problems later on, you know, whether they're physical or the stress continues. So we really wanna keep our stress down as much as possible. So I would say, you know, the, especially outdoors activities, go outside, get some sunshine on your face. If you sit in the sunshine for 15 minutes a day, and I know this week isn't great, but it'll be back. <laughs> uh, 15 minutes on your face has been shown to lower rates of depression. So get outside as much as you can, take some deep breaths, bring yourself back to the here and now, and it's gonna be okay. In rural areas, you're, uh calling in, we're discussing between uh, Hinesburg, where I am, and Lindenville, I think, maybe where you are, but you can correct me if I've got that wrong. Um, this stress can sometimes be magnified in rural communities around the state, whether uh, issues like what you have to deal with, you have to travel into your office to even make this uh, broadband connection. Um, thank you, by the way, for taking that extra trip. Uh, other folks might not have any access, therefore information might be coming in differently, or some folks may be using um, electronic media for taking care of their kids for some of their day, looking at educational programs, but not everybody has access to that. So all of those things can lead to more stress that maybe rural areas or folks that don't have broadband or other factors I'm not thinking of. Can you maybe address and even reveal some of those issues folks are facing in some parts of the state? Yes, because my office is in Lindenville. I live in a town of 800 people. And our only internet at my house is from VTEL. 
which can come and go with there's a lot of people on it right now it's very slow it cuts out in the middle of the day which is why i'm still working in my office i cannot work from home right now uh, so so one of the problems i'm finding especially trying to work because a lot of us are working online is we've got to like be flexible use different times sometimes i'm calling a client on the phone and seeing their face on my computer you know what whatever way we can make that work it's all about flexibility the other problem i'm having is school because i'm also homeschooling two little kids now and the teachers you know give out their homework and their websites and things and it might not work so for my family you know uh, my priority is to get them to move into the next grade next fall do what they can for work but there are so many other lessons to be learned that aren't on the computer right now so we're more focusing on that what are things that vermonters can do to help each other through this pandemic or what are some of the resources or ways that we can all help maintain our mental health uh, during this period i have to say i feel like we're in a really good place to do this we all kind of live a lifestyle that's super isolated i mean especially up here in northeastern vermont we're very good at this kind of thing. So if, if you're having trouble, get on you know, FaceTime or Zoom or any other way to see people's faces, if you can. Uh, we need to stay as connected as we can. You know, Check in on your parents by calling them once a day. Check in on your friends wherever you need to. Uh, I, I'm sure there are resources. I know as therapists, we're especially busy right now, but if you want to email or call a local therapist, please do go to Psychology Today, look up somebody. We're trying to answer as many people as we can right now. Uh, I think it's all about staying connected and we're not necessarily used to that in some rural places up here. You know, we have a very small community, but we need to like reach out and talk to people. In those rural areas, if you don't have broadband, what are some of the ways people <laughs> can help each other i mean obviously phones still work uh for now uh yes. are there other ways that people can help each other in in the rural uh part of the state what we've been doing in our little area is uh yelling at people from our decks as they drive by you know walking down roads and asking people how they are from a far distance i mean we really are checking up on people so we have to go back to old methods of communication which is kind of fun you know my dad's up at the sugar house and I, I don't want to go near him, even though I think I'm pretty safe. And so I go grab a chair and I put it outside the sugar house and we yell back and forth to each other. So we have to go back to those days, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of funny. We have to find some humor in this too. Maybe even a can and a string and another can. <laughs> or write on windows. I know grandchildren who are taking markers, you know, washable and writing on their grandparents' windows to play tic-tac-toe. So that kind of thing. Whatever we can think of, we have to be inventive here just to stay connected that's a great example uh that's what we're looking for is you know creative ideas you know none of us come up with all of them and as we share them i think that helps for a lot of other folks finally how are you personally dealing with this time uh what can the community do either specifically for you as an individual but but also in the broader support for healthcare providers uh because healthcare is both physical which we've been talking a lot about with respect to you know our lungs and spatial distancing and and physical health care providers but also as mental health care providers how do we help folks like you who are getting more calls more requests for time you juggling that and taking care of yourself it has been an enormous struggle i personally go through waves you know of, of anxiety and sadness and then i'll come back to a calm space again and something new will happen because i have to keep up on the news to kind of filter it through to my clients who have mental illness. And so I, I can't really find space away from it these days. Um, I would say to be helpful to people like me, and I, I do have support at home. I have uh, my partners at home, homeschooling the kids right now. Um, but I just think it's the same thing. Reach out, say, are you okay? Do you need to talk to anything? Do you need a break? Can I read a book to the kids over FaceTime um, while you just sit down and take a minute? Um, you know, I'm in the same spot as everyone else. And I have to say too, uh, you know, everybody's in a different situation right now. A lot of people don't have the resources that you and I do. And so it's okay to just survive through this. I want to thank you for being with me today and all the time you've taken to get to be able to be with <laughs> me today. Um, so thank you, Christy. Uh, thank you to all of our viewers for joining us again on this brief podcast. We're just trying to get information out to folks uh, during these stressful times, activities people can do 
uh, different opportunities, whether it's an education situation or, or one like this. We do have more information. Uh, you can go for COVID-19 here in Vermont. You can go to the Vermont Department of Health at healthvermont.gov. You can also visit uh, my own website, uh, zuckerman4vt.com. We have COVID-19 resources, including all of these podcasts uh, and other resources for folks to link onto. And uh, just want to close, I'm Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman. It's one of the many conversations we're trying to have with folks all across Vermont, things that we can do during this uh, coronavirus pandemic and how we can all make it through these times. So uh, Christy, thank you again. Really appreciate it.